All right, guys, you're welcome back to the views from the stand. My name is Edafi Matthias Yogere, and I've got the, the gladiators in the building. I'm not going to waste my time trying to do introduction. You'll get to know them, each one of them. But I know that I've got uh, Bobby Ray here, who is uh, a passionate Manchester United fan and uh, a professor in the making. It does look like a Frenchman anyway. And I've got my brother, my friend, my teammate, my colleague. We are in this together. Daniele. Daniele is what I would call a consummate professional. He's a lecturer, or you can call it professor. Uh, he teaches Italians English and teaches English people Italian. And he's worked with some of the best clubs and best players in Italian in, in Italian league. Uh, notably among them is Alberto Giladino, the World Cup winner. You can spend an entire lifetime and never get to meet a World Cup winner. Not to talk about work with them. So I'm proud to have a friend and a brother who works with a great football legend. And uh, the next man on the list, he wasn't here last week. He was busy traveling around Europe and uh, making things happen for people. Uh, Mario Leo, is, uh, he's got 700 clubs and players and coaches combined on his list. Working and making sure that the world that we are moving into that is driven by data is smoothly run is one that I'm looking forward to to help the Nigerian Premier Football League uh, run properly on its data and all that. We're going to get into that conversation in the future. But for now, uh, let's face what we're here to do. Views from the stand is a show that analyzes and um, try to predict and tell you what to expect. It's a 30 minute show or under 30 minutes show, but we'll try our best to do that. So let's start off uh, immediately with Daniele. Daniele, uh, the Italian series starts tomorrow. You guys are pretty much starting earlier than normal. I don't know why that is, but I guess you will tell us. Who are the players, the new signing, or the coaches, or the teams that we should look at look at for? Um, uh, as it is today in the Italian Serie A, who are the teams and the players that we should look at for? Okay, yes, it's uh, starting, let's say, normally one week earlier than usual, uh, because normally it starts uh, on the last Sunday of August or last weekend of August, while, uh, you know, we're kind of still halfway through August and, um, you know, we're starting already. Um, there's been, um, you know, a very important uh, Mercato transfer news, um, which is Albert Gudmundsson, one of the best players of uh, last year's Serie A, uh, you know, a fantastic number 10 from Iceland, has just moved from Genoa to Fiorentina. And that's going to strengthen Fiorentina a lot. Uh, we'll see what Genoa, who did very well last year, they finished more or less mid-table. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what they're going to do to to replace him. But this might trigger a you know a series of transfers. We we'll see, we'll see. Um, I think we're kind of close, or it's already been sealed to Coop Miners from Atalanta to Juventus. That's another big. Big signings, a uh, big signing. Um, so Juventus are, you know, I think Juventus's shape is uh, more or less uh, uh, outlined. So um, I, I think, you know, considering that more or less probably the big names have now all moved. Um, we'll see if Nico Gonzalez is going to stay in Florence or if he's going to make a move to Juventus. But with uh, more or less all the big names now, you know, uh, staying where they they are, I think uh, Inter are still the probably the best team. But I think AC Milan and Juventus have also very uh, have also got very good teams. We'll see what will happen with Napoli. We'll also see what will happen with Roma because apparently Paolo Di Bala is tempted to go to Saudi Arabia, which would be a a shock, I guess to. Roma fans, but we will we will see. That's uh, more or less it for the big signings of yesterday and today. Uh, so uh, before before I jump to the others in the house, uh, do you think that uh, the fans and management of Juventus will give Thiago Motta the time required to set up his system of play, his methodology, and get them playing the way Bologna was playing last season that they saw and decide to ask him to come join them? I 
you know, I doubt, to be honest, because obviously in if you're the Juventus coach, the Juventus manager, you're expected to deliver immediately, to deliver results immediately. So, uh, you know, it will have to get results. And uh, in the meantime, while it's getting results, it will also have to show, you know, the brilliant type of football that he showed with, with Bologna. But normally with you know there, there there isn't much time juventus managers aren't given uh much time and look at what happened with sarri he was expected to implement sarri ball and even buffon in an interview said there was you know no time for you know kind of shifting the culture they came from a very pragmatic culture to you know another type of football but he was you know he stayed one year but then he was he was not allowed any more time uh, because if you're coaching the big clubs and i mean in italy there's a lot of pressure on managers anyway but especially if you're coaching the big big uh, clubs right uh the way the drama is with napoli and osime is uh is looking like he would go to chelsea but just perhaps he doesn't go to chelsea and knowing the antecedents of antonio conte and what he did with uh, diego costa at chelsea sa sacking him with an sms do you think that there is a possibility that Aurelio De Laurentiis tells him, you know what, we couldn't get Lukaku. Please just reintegrate him into the squad. He's the highest goal scorer for this team in the last three seasons. We still need him if we want to get something. Is there a chance that that can happen or it's not a bridge too far? To be honest, I don't know. But obviously, I think if it didn't happen, so if he didn't move, then rather than a possibility, it would be more of a necessity. Because you know you've you've still got a top class striker, and Antonio Conte heavily relies on his number nine. Uh, his, this is historically proven, and um, so I think it will be very very important for him to to have a you know a number nine that he can rely on. So if if it didn't happen, if he, if he didn't leave, I think they should uh, d try you know whatever is possible to yeah integrate him uh, back into the system uh, i think it would be a necessity all right thank you very much uh at this point this is where we would let you go and say thank you for joining us and uh, so you can go take care of business at home uh and the office uh we'll bring in abib now but thank you very much uh but uh, right now i go to uh bobby bobby uh the story of manchester uh, city facing uh the tribunal or what how do we i don't know what to call it but manchester city going into this inquiry uh 115 charges all of the problems that they are dealing with for you as a man united fan in manchester enjoying the beautiful weather today we don't know what's going to happen in the next minute do you guys kind of like feel happy or excited that, ah thank god they are, they are going to suffer uh is there any part of the Manchester people or the Manchester fans that, that make you guys feel, yeah, this is good for them? What's your reaction to, to the trials? I mean, starting next month? Um, basically, the um, majority's reaction to the, to the trials is basically justice is going to be served. So there's no, um, there's no sentiment about it. We know that because if you look at the likes of Everton, um, Leicester, who might face some um, points deduction, they had their own charges are like two, three, four charges. And in case of since we are talking about 115. So nobody is being sentimental. Only, the only people who are being sentimental about it are the Man City fans. But in general, Manche fans from Manchester United, even other clubs, it's just like, let justice be served. That's just that's just what us we expect. Are you letting justice? The, are you letting justice be served because they are Man City and you've been in serious pain since they were dominating? The way every other club in Germany always say, "Oh, we don't want Bayern to win," but you're not doing what Bayern are doing, or you want justice to serve because it is right. Because right there, in the principle of what is good for the goose is good for the gander, they've just gave Manchester United exceptions. You know, uh, they would have fallen short of the PSRO if we go by the letters of the rules. They've just given them exceptions. They just bent the rules one way or the other for them. And Man United, you know, have this, oh, 
voice of uh, Jacob and hand of Esau in all of their success of previous years. You really, do you really think as a Man United fan, you have the moral high ground to talk about justice being served? If 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 United does not have the moral high ground, then no club in the Premier League has the moral high ground. Wow. Because there is no club in the Premier League whose hands are completely clean. Then there's Let no justice that is going to be served. No, no, no. Justice, because it is, we're talking about 115 charges. And most of this, these issues, we're not even doing pep era. These issues are way back. We're going to Mancini. We're going back to um, Pellegrini. Pellegrini. That is when this, yeah, that is when these issues happened. It's not even now. These are old issues that are coming back. And that is the time that Man City used to get their footing. That is when Man City used to build, that is the time that Man City used to build the foundation that they are standing on right now. Somebody said to me, and I'm going to yeah. quote the person. He said, if Man City were not winning titles, 115 charges would never be seen. The fact that they've broken that order of winning more than three straight, that's where all of this thing is coming from. Hold your thoughts. I'm not even going to bother about your reaction. It's just uh, somebody who sent me a message. Let me go to Mario. Mario, uh, good to have you here. You know, I'm always blushing when I'm talking to you because I feel like I have this man who's an encyclopedia, who is a great guy, who understands the game. Uh, Mario, what's happening in Germany? Is Bayern ready? There's a video of Vincent Company, you know, cursing in the Burnley training ground and everybody's acting all surprised. As a football person, that's a regular thing in every football training ground or dressing room. Why are people acting all surprised? I don't know. But is Bayern Munich ready to defeat Xabi Alonso's army? I personally don't think so that uh, Bayern is, is ready because obviously uh, Winston Company is is building his, his new strategy. Uh, he's, he's building a diff completely different different game plan um, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. Um, the team has been shaping up over the over the last couple of weeks. They have they've improved, yeah. But but it's still obviously um, a lot of stars outside on the bench and and a lot of transfer policies for Bayern Munich to be executed, um, as well as coming in and going out. So Bayern had two setbacks on on players they wanted to buy, which they didn't get, like Doué, who goes to PSG. Um, and, and obviously that causes also some concern. And obviously how does a person like Leon Goretzka react not, not being in the starting 11, but, but being trusted on it and, and also somebody who doesn't want to leave the club because he's, he's happy in Munich with his life. So, so those disturbances off the pitch uh, and in the dressing room will, will affect it. Yeah, while all the others are, are pretty much yeah, in, in, a, in a good shape yeah, by Leverkusen. Um, yet, yeah, they suffered a defeat. Um, but obviously, Sabi Alonso knows um, his his match plan and game plan, and 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 kind of use the entire squad. So that's why these things are expected to happen here and there. But like I said, I'm I look forward um, to the start of the season. Germany starts traditionally with the cup seasons. Um, this weekend um, will be some some big upsets because obviously the second Bundesliga is already in flow for two weeks um, and then comes the cup games and that obviously is the biggest hurdle to go over for the Bundesliga teams who didn't have a competitive game yet. All right, let, Mario, let me uh, bring in uh, Abib here because I'm just going to have him for one question. I'll let him go and I'm bringing our surprise guest. Uh, Abib, uh, Manchester United have signed the lead, Mazuri, Yolo, Zigzi, but there are still some people who see the club doesn't have its spine. Roy Kane said that, Posco said that, uh, Alan Shera said that, Gary Lineker said that as well. For you, uh, and this is your one question uh, for, for the show today, Manchester United, you're a Manchester United fan. You're far away in the US. You have to stay awake to watch them play. Does Manchester United have a team that would be able to compete for the top four? Yes and no. They, last season, they had so many underlining issues. I think they were struck with injury, which is something you can't control. Yep. They considered a lot of goals, which is something they've tried to address by bringing in Matthias Delict. They've tried to bring in Delhi Euro. And even in the midfield, um, I think Bobby analyzed it on, on Monday, where they have this sandwich donuts where half of the team is trying to press and they, they leave like this gap in midfield. And this is more of like a tactical issue on Eric Tenag. Although in precision, they've tried to like address those issues by trying to be more compact when they press. It remains to be seen whether they can implement this in the long run. 
and they also need like a defensive midfielder or a number six. It depends on, especially the profile of like a player that can dictate the tempo, tempo of the game. They are yet to like sort that issue. If you are asked, season, if you are asked right now to name a player that fits that profile that you're talking about, who is the player? If I'm to if I'm to bring in a player that fits that profile, yes, sir. It depends on. For me, I think you need someone like a Rodri. But over time, um, Tenag has shown that he likes profile like um, Frankie De Jong, and it's impossible to like bring in Frankie De Jong because of his wages. What so about Tenag? Uh, why didn't you guys go for Fabian Ruiz? Fabian Ruiz, Fabian Ruiz is more like an advanced playmaker. Um, he, is not like the Rodri, it's not like your typical six that sits and dictates the tempo of the game. It's more like your advanced player, more like your second option in your final third. That's a player like Fabian Ruiz. And last season, they also struggled with like scoring like lots of goals. They, they scored like 58 goals. And this season, I don't think they've addressed such issues. And they are relying mainly on Marcus Rashford. And if Marcus Rashford doesn't hit form, I think they will struggle to like hit the height this season. Uh, and they also uh, brought in a striker like Zerxit, who yep. has come to say like he's in number nine and a half. And I don't know what that means. He doesn't see himself as a full striker. He doesn't see himself as a number 10. He sees himself as a number nine and a half. I don't Bo know what Bo that means. Bobby is laughing. Bobby, I'm going to let you answer, but he's not going to be here to hear your answer. Uh, Abib, I need to let you go now. I need to bring in my chief, a chief of my vi a village in Nigeria. If I don't bring him in now, he might get angry and send boys after me. It's, uh, it's not a courtes, but sometimes I behave like one. Uh, I'm bringing him in. Thank you very much for being on the show today. Uh, let's run. It's not beginning to look like a fun in show anyway. Uh, we just started and we're already having congregations like Chelsea squad. But uh, Abib, thank you very much for your time. Let's uh, run over. Uh, you can exit now and let's bring in the next man. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let me come back to you. Let me circle back to you, Bobby. You were smiling when he was talking. And uh, I do hope that China will put on his uh, camera so that we see Okay, yeah, he's there already. Uh, this is uh, China Acheru, the author of the book, A Thousand Times on the Same Road. Uh, volume 1, it's been well enjoyed and gone around the world. We're waiting for Volume 2 to come out. It's somewhere up there, somewhere there. I've got a lot of copies of it. Um we will come to him later. He's not just one. He's a chief. He's a high chief in Nigeria. I, I like to call him a cultist. Uh, it's, uh, it's a juju priest as well. He's uh, an ancestor, a uh, living ancestor. He's a lot of things. Right? He's a Liverpoolian. And Bobby, unfortunately, you will not like him because he's a Liverpoolian <laughs> and you're a Mercurian. But none of my business. We're going to enjoy this show. Me and uh, uh, Mario are going to enjoy this show. So let me come back to you, Bobby. Uh, they say that you don't have a dictator or what the Italians will call a metronome in your team that can make, that can detect play, that can make things happen. How true that is? Because you previously have said, oh, Man United are going to challenge the top four and bet on, I can bet on it to win one title. Please, appreciate. Yeah, so Habib is right. That's the reason why I said um, we need to look for an alternative to Casemiro. Casemiro does not have the legs. Casemiro cannot progress the ball properly and he cannot even defend the, um, the game properly. So we need a metronome. We need somebody who can enforce and also move, progress the ball properly. That is why we also want, apart from having a six, we also need another eight. But for the six, if I was, apart from Ugate, because Ugate... It's more like a destroyer. It's yeah. more like an enforcer. But Ugate does not progress the boy properly. That is part of his game that he still needs to work on. He's not pretty good in that. If I was to just pick somebody who can perfectly do that job, combine both roles together, I would say, but he's not He's not free anyway. He's, he's gone to MPSG. I would say, um, Yao Neves. That is the, and that was actually United's number one target before Ugate. But Ugate was poor, the one poor available. People, poor people should stop going to price Ferrari. Uh, you say you poor people. Buy yeah, to, poor you should buy Toyota and start Uber business. You cannot be trying to price players that you know you cannot buy. Let me bring the chief before they send Curtis to come and beat me. Let me talk to better people that they know what they're doing. Um, China, Equerryman, first off, let's start with Nigeria. The ban, today officially the ban on Samsung 
have run it full course. Some people say it's been lifted. It's not lifted. It has run it full course. It's jail term have expired. So it's out of jail. Now he can go at coaching. Some people are already saying to go coach the Super Eagles. I'm talking about the Super Eagles who don't have a coach. Last week they said Salisi Yusuf is going to come. When the dust of his bribery was raised, now we're hearing that Iguavon is going to take the team against the same Benin Republic that beat us two goals to one. What's your reaction to all of this? I think Senza should tell me happy that he can now coach again. Then you ask himself, what do I want to do? I always don't think that you start from the top. He has had about two spells with Super Eagles. Now, out for five years, he needs to begin to warm his way back into coaching. I don't think it should be from the national team. Uh, we just we saw we have seen Finidi at Aimba and Rivers United. We hear Amonique is just at Scotland. So um he will start from Nigerian League Club. He could start from Nigerian League Club. That's if he wants to continue in coaching. Maybe he should write a book. Maybe he could write a book. Listen. We want to know what, 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 what's inside Sanzias' head. What really happened? He, he, there are a lot of stories around Sanzias' life. So he has to ask himself first, what do I want to do with my life? When he has answered that question successfully, they move to the next stage, but it must not always start with the Super Eagles. Your next book, the volume two of A Thousand Times on the Sea Road, is written on your chest, The Diary of a Vagabond. Uh... This show will not be enough for us to ask the question why you chose that because you you were raised by good parents and well educated parents you 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 were trained but why you choose vagabond is what I don't know who is the vagabond I don't know but let's talk about Liverpool that team that is right behind you there Liverpool have not done any signing in this windows they've had the best preseason in many years now the team seems to be in harmony that's the word of Anis Lott that the harmony is good. What are your expectations? And uh, what could truncate this beautiful expectation that a lot of Liverpool fans are having? What's the one thing that could go wrong and everything goes from north to south? A bad start. A, ba a bad start. I mean, we, we, we can win our first five games in the league. We can win our first five games. There's, there's, there's that element of luck. Then there's that injury that will disrupt your team flow. Now, a new coach... He has looked at the team in preseason. And it probably feels we can start with this, except we have that one player we need. The one player they thought they needed, they don't want to come to, to the club. So, with about a week or so to the transfer window ending, will Liverpool get another player? We don't know. But maybe the coach thinks we can start with this team. The team is not bad. But again, I think we are light in midfield. McAllister, Zoboslai. Curtis Jones, Elliot, Endo. I think we are light in midfield. Maybe Cody Gabo can also play midfield. I think we are light in midfield. So if we have that one injury uh, to a key player, it could affect the team. It could affect the team. So as fans and as a man that has played football manager for over 20 years, we all know to buy players. That's what fans want to do, buy players. But again, I live in Panacourt. There are a group of guys who work with the team every day. They know better than I do. If they think this team is good enough to start the league, I'll stand with them. They are the coaches of the team. I'll stand with them. All right, uh, Mario, I'm coming to you now, and I'm going to read this message verbatim as it is sent to me. Uh, hello, Idafi. Ask your panel in the show when the show starts. RB Leipzig came, pretended like they want to do something and they want to wrestle the title, but right in front of them, uh, it never do work club like Bayer Leverkusen came out of nowhere and won the title. Ask your German expert, is there a chance that Be uh, RB Leipzig would ever do a Bayern? They don't need to go the season unbeaten. They just need to win the Bundesliga title. Is there a chance that that's going to happen at any time soon in our lifetime? It, it, it certainly can happen. I mean, uh, uh, RB Leipzig has uh, has financial uh, environment uh, to to buy any player um, they they wish, um, and and obviously with the with the backing of of Red Bull, they can they can like I said prolong this. Um, RB Leipzig has has built a foundation of of absolutely incredible talent. Uh, they they winning uh, or progressing very well in in their youth academies. Yeah, who plays German Bundesliga, who, who also plays very well, and obviously they want to transition youngsters into into the RB Leipzig, RB Leipzig ecosystem. Um, but when you see, like for example, now they got weakened um, over the last four or five years. Every every time, yeah, key players um, are, are departing, like Shobosh Lai. 
Uh, we talked about it. Um, now, obviously, Danny Olmo has, has left. Um, so so they're losing um, great talent also very early where, where they can't kind of execute yet or, or kind of harvest their their seeds, which they've, which they've done. Um, but ultimately, I think in, in two years, two, three years from now, RB Leipzig will definitely be a contender for the tight, uh, for the German Bundesliga title. Obviously, they have now two cup wins um, under their belly. They know how to win trophies. Um, they, they progress on in international competitions very well. Um, and they do business very maturely. Obviously, they don't announce uh, who they're going to sign, but obviously it's going to build into their system. They've got from the youth to the senior team a very, very progressive um, and a very, very advanced tactical style. Um, so so they can progress their, their youth team players into the, the senior teams. And, and I, I predict that they will be a challenger um, for the title in, in two or three years because they only lack an entire kind of season sustainable performance yeah like uh, like running running a wave like Bayern or Leverkusen last season yeah which is running a wave um and and that's what that's what they need to need to work on and obviously like i said for the last two three seasons they play in international competitions they're successful in the cup competition so they they know now how to balance uh, these these games because um winning the title is not a sprint yeah it's a marathon and and they know now how to deal with marathons well, let me come to you, uh, Bobby, uh, for the fixtures of matches that are going down today. Manchester United play against Fulham, 8 p.m. It's the time, Nigerian time. And uh, we've got uh, uh, a few other games in other league, in the Spanish La Liga, for instance. We've got um, Seta Vigo playing against Deportivo Alaves, and then you have uh, La Palmas playing against Sevilla. But then in, Fr in France, you have Le Havre playing against the big almighty Paris Saint-Germain, 7.45 that one is. In the championship tonight, we have Conventry playing against Oxford United. And in the Dutch Eredivisie, you have a Fortuna City playing against uh, Almare City FC for, for the sake of Manchester United. Manchester United have the record of the most opening day wins. So this is not supposed to be a threat, but this is the same Manchester United that was trash, beaten and obliterated by Conventry. Uh, Crystal Palace last season, that was, you know, almost killed in the FA Cup by Chris Coventry until they got lucky. How solid is your confidence in this match? Don't forget there is uh, Alex Iwobi who's in form. There is Emily Smith who's also found uh, Grace now. He's playing again uh, to give you a problem. How confident are you that uh, in the Leaking Roof Arena, you call it Theatre of Dreams, some of you call it Old Trafford, but it's a Leaking Roof Arena now. How confident are you of that game? Very confident. Very, very confident. Um, yes, there could be mishaps, there could be following can be a banana peel, but I'm very confident. Um, defense the only place you can where it can be tricky might be in defense because Shaw is out, and I doubt Mazari will start, but most probably Delit will start. So if Delit starts and Martinez starts, I don't know whether Martinez will be at left back. Ten Hag was giving something like that in the press um presser. He could be at left back, the lead in the middle. But that would be the only shaky part. But I'm confident that we are going to win. Win the game. Yeah. I'm with the squad, the with the squad that Manchester United have got right now, what's the best system yeah. they should play? Three at the back, four at the back, or five at the back? No, four at the back. Four at the back. If I was to if I was to pick the team, my team would be uh Masvari on the left, the lead and Martinez in the middle. Um, Dalo on the right. In the middle, you have um Casimero, um Menu. Then you up in front of them, you have um Mount. On the left hand side, you have Ganacho. On the right, you have Amad Diallo. Then I'll play Bruno as a false nine because I don't think Zexi is ready. From what Ten Hag has been saying, Zexi is not ready to start games yet. Before before I go to China, we've got uh, less than uh, uh, seven minutes to wrap up this show now. Uh, for the German Bundesliga. Uh, we've always, we saw what uh, Dortmund did last season going all the way to the finals of the year for Champions League. That was a beautiful one as far as I'm concerned. But somehow in the league, they seem to falter when you need it the most, especially two seasons ago. Everybody had handed the title to them and then they lost it, you know, in a manner that is distasteful and disgusting. What is the problem with B uh, Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga? 
Well, the, the problem is obviously the, the the nervousness to to bring it above the finish line, um, and and obviously the Bundesliga is is a very very competitive game, and and obviously um, Dortmund thought they 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 had already the title before the last match of of the season. They weren't uh, really yeah putting up a fight on the last match day against Mainz, and and Mainz um, and Dortmund are, are very close to each other because when you see. Thomas Tuchel moved from uh, Mainz to to Dortmund. Uh, um, Koch, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Klopp Klopp. moved from from Mainz to to Dortmund. Uh, but also the same on, on the player side. Yeah, Schürrle moved to Dortmund. Abdou Diallo moved to Dortmund from Mainz. So so it's a traditional kind of very close relationship. So Dortmund thought on this last match day, Mainz doesn't do harm to us. And yeah, and suddenly after 20 minutes, Mainz was leading 2-0. Um, and then obviously, yeah, it, they were still champions because Dort, uh, Köln held a draw against Köl, uh, Bayern, um, and then suddenly Bayern took the lead. And then, and then obviously, you your legs are like eighty kilos heavy. You can't move anything, it, and although you fight, fight, fight. Um, Edafi, you've been in that. Uh, Köln, yes, and I have. Playing, so you know what it means, yeah, from a mental perspective, and you can't put out that switch. Um, so, so Dortmund was was lacking that that determination and and that that full desire of of winning, um, and and that's always uh, um, been sort of the argument over the last three, four, five years on on Borussia Dortmund. Last season, we already saw improvements, um, especially obviously on the international run going into the Champions League final, and Dortmund doesn't take these for granted, so they celebrated this momentum very, very intensively. Uh, but this season, I think they they've recruited very well. Um, obviously lost tremendous kind of identity. Uh, the fans lost tremendous amount of identity. Marco Reus just signed for LA Galaxy yesterday. Uh, Mats Hummels departing. Um, Jaden Sancho obviously returned on loan and and, and went back to Man, Man United. Um, and, and Dortmund can't afford their yeah, 60, 70 million asking price from, from Man United. So so that's 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 the, obviously the dilemma Dortmund has been in, but obviously their recruitment of, of Maxi Bayer, of Kuto from the Man City Academy, um, who already have professional experience, kind of will replace Madsen. So I think Dortmund will come with, with strength into the new season. Um, obviously, with here in Germany, the big news is obviously um, Nicolas Süle, um, because obviously he's been overweight and had mental uh, challenges uh, throughout the last two seasons, but he returned after the summer camp, yeah, 30 kilos lighter, uh, fully fresh. So Dortmund talks about a new signing on the defense line. So obviously um, Nick Süle and, and Schlotterbeck could be kind of the, the back four. Um, and and that Süle is a great player. Everybody knows it. So I think the, the balance yeah, going into the new season obviously needs to show tomorrow in the cup competition. And then we obviously see how the season start goes with Dortmund. All right. Everybody have 30 seconds on the clock for them. Uh, Bobby, your top Four peak for the English Premier League. Um, Arsenal, Man City, United, Chelsea. Wow, that's what that shows. Chelsea, I'm United. So Liverpool is not there in the top four. Nah, okay, no, no, Liverpool. no problem, no problem. You just want to offend the, the vagabond. Uh, Mario, your top four pick for the German Bundesliga. Champion Bayern 04 Leverkusen, second Bayern Munich, third Borussia Dortmund, fourth RB Leipzig. Second Bayern Munich. You think yep. Leverkusen would defend the title? Yep. If we live long, you will see miracles. Uh, China, please, your top four for the Premier League. Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal, and Chelsea. No man, you. How? <laughs> I don't want to start uh, a war here. Yeah. This is a place of peace. Whatever yes, the two of you are doing. Probably. When yeah, me and Mario... Yeah, China, we're there here. When Mario and I leave, you guys can start your war. But I mean, this English war, one, I'm not part of it. Battle of the North, I'm not part of it. Well, thank you guys for being on the show. And for those who've come in and left, uh, very, very grateful to have you all. You guys are the best team a man can have. Let's do this again on Monday when we would have seen a lot of games and we can come back and talk about the games that we've seen. But thank you very much. Is the view from the stand. Bye-bye, everybody. Stay tuned. Don't forget, subscribe to this channel and turn on your not notification buttons because we're here to give you the very, very best of updates, analysis, and predictions. Have a wonderful weekend.